Welcome back to the Northbridge Flute Academy and in this particular excerpt we're looking at a piece by Jans Donjon which is called Pan, Pastoral for Flute. The focuses in this charming impressionistic piece are on a warm sound coupled with good control of playing scales and arpeggios but at different speeds. And even though it comes across as a beautiful slow melody, of major concern is that the, between the long notes there are sort of uh, cascades and clusters of quite quick notes. And we're lured into a false sense of security because it is a slow moving piece. It's marked moderato, maybe crotchet or quarter note equals 72. So there's a sort of degree of you know, hot sunshine, a degree of lethargy and the problem with this is that we've got long notes, but then sometimes in between those long notes, as I say, some very quick notes. And what we want to do is to maintain the character that's in those long notes throughout the quicker notes. Now, it starts on a G just at the top of the stave, and this G needs careful anticipation. It's also marked piano. So we don't want the tongue to be over aggressive. We want the tongue to be something that's actually going to help this first note speak. And there are several ways of articulating notes, as we all know. But in this case, I would probably opt for an articulation between the lips, as though one's spitting out a grape seed. And very simply, what that is, is just gently pulling the tongue back between the lips like this. And it kind of sounds like a tap dripping into a bucket. The secret is not to move the tongue too violently. We don't want because you can hear there's already a bit of an explosion there. Um, so this is how I would start the piece. So. Once again. Now, I was using the lips and the tongue between the lips, but equally, before that first note sounds, there has to be a huge amount of anticipation. We can't just try and match everything, line up if you like. We can't line up everything together at the same time. You go <laughs> that isn't going to work. So the energy that you're going to create for that first note has to be made well in advance of any sound coming out of instruments. So once again, So I'm completely lined up to get that going. Now, the first, I think the first major problem in this piece comes in bar four, where we start on the C above the, the stave, and then there's a scale up in forte up to the top G. Now, the flute is very audible in the top octave. Um, if, I don't know if you've been to a orchestral concert and if there's a piccolo playing boy you can always hear the piccolo in an orchestra and the, equally the top octave of the flute has a tendency to start getting rather razor edged unless we're cautious about it so it says forte and going up to a top g on the third and fourth beat of the bar i would advise you to consider that scale up almost in diminuendo so we get this And then we're nicely lined up for the beginning of the first of the next bar. The next problem, I think, comes in bar 16, where we have this motif. It's the end of a phrase. Now, because it's the end of the phrase, there's a very strong chance that the A which happens on the third beat, is going to be flat. We don't want to be running out of air and get this. There's something so depressing about a flute in particular sounding flat. Um, if you're going to be anything, be sharp. I, if, ideally, you want to be in tune, but, but that's, that's asking quite a lot sometimes. So once again, be careful that that A at the end of the phrase is just high enough.
and then again we're nicely lined up for the next bar. A new thing comes into the mix in bar 19 where we've got uh, semiquavers or 16th notes but this time they're articulated and even though on paper they look as though they should all be the same length I do wonder if making a whole bar of semiquavers 16th notes all the same length is actually particularly musical. So I would advise in this case that you think about sort of a conversation taking place in this in this bar and maybe uh, the beginning of the bar the beginning of the 16th note semiquavers could be more like a soprano aria in a Handel opera so ha, 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 something that's sort of got a degree of sort of almost like laughter in it but as the bar goes on then those notes can perhaps get a little longer maybe something like this And you can hear there that I'm starting the notes at the top shorter, but as I get to the bottom, even though they're staccato, which only means detached, they're getting longer. Then from bar 20 through to 22, arpeggios appear in the piece. And I think, again, it's important in this that we, we understand the idiosyncrasies of the flute. These arpeggios start from the middle octave, go to the bottom and back to the middle again. And of course the flute naturally gets weaker towards the bottom. The middle octave is fine for us, but the lower we go, the more difficult it becomes to extract volume in those lower notes. So again, I would suggest in this that you actually do a small up and down across the arpeggio as it goes down and up, something like this. And you can hear there there's an energy in the lower notes, which if we do nothing, if I do nothing, if I play what's on the paper, but now with energy, so that's bar 20 to 22. Bar 24 is the climax of the piece. Now, it's preceded by six semiquavers, 16th notes, and my advice to you here is because the beginning of the bar is marked fortissimo and it's a top F, take time over those six notes immediately prior to the top F. So there's more of a feeling of a landing at this, you know, this point. And for the top F, I would urge you to add this finger in the right hand. It's just a sweeter sounding note. So we get without. It sounds a bit nasal, it sounds a bit sharp, it sounds a bit ugly. Now if I fork the F. It's a much sweeter sound. After this, We've got uh, a, a whole string of semiquavers, 16th notes, but in a cadenza. It says ad libitum. And the secret here is take time. We don't want to give our audience the impression that we're desperate to get the next train home. So it's good if we take time. And maybe something like this. <laughs> And even the accented notes halfway through the bar, they're not hammer accents, they, you just need to lean on those. And the trill, this is a lethargic piece, the trill also can be lethargic with a slow turn at the end to take us down to the note prior to the recapitulation. Then in bar 31 we have a scale, this time articulated but uh, dotted but with a slur over the top uh, and the tongue needs to be very gentle and it also needs to be close to the point of contact so that we can just literally trip up that scale. Something along the lines of this.
And again, the trill does not need to be fast and the, the little turn at the end, I would take quite slowly. The third to last bar, bar 38, there's a gradual um, quickening and slowing down. It says ad libitum over four beats. So I suggest that you start slow, speed up to the third, and then gradually slow down for the trill in the following bar, which is the penultimate bar. Something along the lines of this. And there we've got something that just gives a nice bit of shape and a kind of feeling that we're coming to the end of the piece. The very last bar, bar 40, um, finishes on a top E. And that note on the flute has a tendency to be a bit sharp. So for that, I will always take my little finger off, particularly as we're in the key of C major. And of course, we don't want the third to sound too sharp. Hence, that's why I take this finger off. With it down, without it. And again, you can hear, hopefully, there's a timbre in that that is actually more suitable to this very enchanting piece by Don Juan called Pan. <laughs> 